Andrew McCart, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I've got to say I am delighted to be joined by former WBO heavyweight world champion Michael Bent. Michael, before we go into the, everything that I wanted to talk about, the Netflix documentary, your, his, your life in boxing, your life outside of boxing, I just want to get a, yeah. a little breakdown on how you are right now. Obviously, the world's going through what they're going through at the moment. I just wanted to get how you're, how you're coping with it. <laughs> well, luckily, um, uh, I got invited uh, up to Vermont to uh, pitch a, uh, a stage production of a play uh, before this thing like hit, this pandemic hit. And I came up here and, um, you know, had some meetings with these people, man, uh, at, at this university in Vermont. And then, bang, this thing hit. So I got stranded up here in Vermont. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, you know, it's like it is ideal up here, man. It's, beautiful. it's lovely up here. Yeah, I'm lucky. I live in Scotland, man. I'm, I'm being biased, but Scotland's a beautiful country as well. So yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. Yeah. You know. like, like I said to you before I pushed record, I watched the documentary on Netflix called Losers. For anybody that hasn't seen the documentary, please go and watch it because I watched it and I was surprised to see you on it because, forgive me for being ignorant, I only knew you from beating Tommy Morrison and then getting right. beat by Herbie Hyde. Right. That's yes. all I knew. That's yes. all I knew of Michael Ben. Right. And when you, I got to learn the story on Netflix and stuff like yeah. that. I was like, wow, what a story. What an absolutely amazing story. But before we get to your story, yeah. for anyone that doesn't know who you are, could you just give them a brief description on your sort of like, your professional sort of boxing? Right. Box? Well, uh, okay, so my name is Michael Bent. I uh, am a five-time national champion here in the States, four-time uh, New York City Golden Gloves champion. Uh, my mom and dad, I came over here when I was, I was born in England, the UK, uh, East Dulwich. My mom and dad are, are immigrants um, of Jamaica, and they went to the England, they went to uh, the States. Uh, I came to the States in like 1972, at the age of like five and a half. And uh, my father was a, um, a massive fan of Cassius Clay. Mm -hmm. Not Muhammad Ali. He still calls him Cassius Clay. I'm like, well, man, check this out. Okay, <laughs> that's his problem. Okay, cool. Okay. But uh, so, um, and he wanted like his son to be like a, a little model, like, you know, a little mannequin of like, you know, uh, Cassius Clay. And that was me. I don't want to box, man. You know, that's, but, uh, that, that's what I got from the documentary. Like, that you yeah. never wanted, it, was, it wasn't your passion to box, but no, 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 you, no. you achieved the ultimate goal. You became heavyweight world champion. You know why, man? Because like, uh, um, because, you know, um, I've experienced like a lot of like defeat and like, you know, like difficult circumstances, blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, I found out when I made the USA boxing team and like when I was like 17 years old, 18 years old, and once again, like, you know, I never, I never wanted to box, but like, you know, I had talent for boxing, right? And I never liked it, but just because you don't like something, it doesn't mean you can't find value in something. And boxing, like, you know, it gave me an education I couldn't get at Harvard or Oxford or Yale. I couldn't, mm -hmm. you know? But the thing is, was it your, you said your father was a massive boxing fan. Again, for, I don't want to, yeah. if you want to go and watch the Netflix documentary, please do, but yeah, I got the, 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 the sort of what I saw from that documentary, your father was quite hard on you growing up in terms of pushing you into boxing, like saying quite Son. hard. Yeah, well, very hard, very hard. I was being polite. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like you know, I used to, um, I used to honestly, I used to like you know uh, harbor a lot of resentment against my father, you know, because like you know, I mean, you know, he was complete fucking prick, you know, <laughs> no, he was. Give me for laughing, you know? yeah. Yeah, no, 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 laugh, no, <laughs> no, no, like you know, the good thing is we can laugh now. Yeah. about that shit you know but like you know he's the kind of guy that would like you know make me get up at like 5 30 in the morning and go outside and wash his car in this fucking snow in the winter time you know so he like you know it was like but like you know he was all about domination but like you know being 55 years old man like you know i can empathize with my father you know uh my father like you know just because like you know, once again just because like you know uh, i don't like something doesn't mean i you know i don't um I can't find value in something, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he taught me like some like you know some valuable lessons, man. But like he was a hardcore dude, man. You know, I, and, I like got you know, that, yeah. I got that impression, yeah, definitely. Yes. And his back, like, you know, because like, you know, he was formed that way. No one was like, you know, gentle with him or like, you know, tender with him as like, you know, as a youth. 
you know, I remember him telling me like, you know, that um, when he was in Jamaica, everyone said uh, that like he would never amount to anything because he take he was taken out of school like, you know, when he was 12 years old and people called him stupid and dunce, blah, blah, blah. And he had like, you know, this massive stammer. And that like, you know, was but like, you know, so he had a lot to prove and overcome. It's so like, you know, like, I'm not, um, I empathize with them now. I get it. You know what I'm saying? You know. Yeah, it's like, it's like that old saying, you're a product of your environment. Bam. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And lucky for me, bro, like, you know, um, I could have been like, you know, uh, my father has violence in him, epic violence in him. And I have epic violence in me. We all do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I had chose to like, if I had um, been under so much control of my father uh, and I believed this stuff, I would have like taken the same path he took. And I, I'd have been like you know, a fucked up human being right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying I'm not fucked up, but like, you know, I recognize my issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, you know, um, so I'm just like, you know, I'm just glad that I met people on the path of like boxing and like, you know, in the arts who like, you know, say, no, 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 no. You're not that guy, bro. This is who you are. Go yeah. on this path. And fuck that path. Yeah. Well, I've been lucky, bro. Hats off to you as well for doing that. But, Michael, we are a boxing channel. We're a huge boxing channel here in the yeah. UK and in Europe. Probably the world nowadays. Yes. I want, to talk, I want to just go straight to the very beginning. Your amateur yes. career. Now, you said to yourself you were a four-time New York State champion, I believe it was. I think you were... Right. I think you were bronze medal in the World Amateur Championship. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And did you lose out on the Olympic team to Ray Mercer? I lost to Ray Mercer. As a matter of fact, like, you know, you know how boxing is, like, you know, um, um, I had a lot of, like, you know, dislike for Ray, like, you know, after he beat me in yeah. the trials, man. But now, I just spoke to Ray, like, maybe, like, um, about three weeks ago, man. And every time we sport, like, every time we speak, I get chills. I'm getting chills now because, like, I love that dude. Because, like, you know, we did something, like, you know, that, like, very few people get a chance to do, man, on, like, at a big level on an elite level, like, you know, I may have lost, but like, you know, I fucking won. You know, I won, like, you know, because of the experience that it offered us, you know? That's a win for us, man. Yeah. Because we can go anywhere in the world, like, you know, and talk to somebody about, like, you know, about overcoming their stuff and, like, you know, uh, being disappointed and failure, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, we, like, you know, those are, like, you know, a part of the lessons, man, that we got. And losing, like, you know, is, isn't the worst thing in the world. That's the thing, it's not, but the, I read an article on you as well when I was doing a little bit of research. I want to learn a yeah. lot more about you and stuff like that. And yeah. The article said that you, were one of, you are one of the most decorated amateur boxers in America. Yes. So was there, when you had done all that, had all them achievements, won all them yeah. medals and stuff like that, yeah. you said you never had a passion for boxing. So what made you turn professional then? Was there a little bit of passion there? Was it your father? Or what made you go, right, I'm going to turn pro? That's a great question, my friend. Uh, I never wanted to turn pro, you're right, right? I thought, you know, when I started boxing as like, you know, a junior, I recognized I had talent. The people who like, you know, were training me recognized I had talent, so like, you know, they're like, you know, they encouraged me. Mm -hmm. You know, not like my father, like my father pushed me. Being encouraged and being pushed is two different things, yeah. right? So these people, like, you know, like, you know, they would encourage you, blah, blah, blah. And I got better and better and better. I would study the craft. I would, like, you know, watch tapes of Ali, blah, blah, blah. And that's from, like, and Duran. I would study the craft. And um, at some point, you know, I, I started to blossom. And uh, so I lose to Ray Mercer in the Olympic trials um, uh, in 88, 88. And I'm, I'm there friends with Frankie Lyles, who's the world championship, like, you know, uh, middleweight world championship from back in the days, and a wonderful amateur boxer. And Frankly and I, Frankie and I took the plane back from Las Vegas after the trials. I think he lost to Roy, Roy Jones in the trials finals. I mean, in the uh, box off. So um, Frankie, like, uh, and I, like, you know, I mean, we're fucking depressed, man. Although, like, you know, at that stage, like, you know, you can't admit you're depressed when you're like, you know, 18, 19 years old, 20 years old. Yeah. You know, you can't admit that shit. That's your ego. You know, we were like, it was sitting there, like, you know, just like, you know, staring into this, like, you know, staring off into the damn sky, like, sky blue, like, you know, it's like, um, and Frankie says to me, yeah, Mike, um, you know, I'm, um, I'm thinking I'm signing with Emmanuel Stewart. You know, if you want to, like, you know, if you want me to, to uh, make the uh, introduction to him, I can. And he did. 
and then uh, of course, like you know, Emmanuel being the uh, the massive boxing like you know uh, genius he is, he knew about me, and uh, so he came to my house in Queens maybe like a week or so later, maybe about a month later, and uh, you know he pulls up in this like black limousine, Emmanuel Stewart, and my father goes fucking ballistic. Himalayan Stewart, Jesus Christ, I'm my Himalayan Stewart in my yard. I'm like my man, easy. Well, well, like, you know, I didn't tell him, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, God, fuck, I mean, come on, relax, B. Relax, man. Like, oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, man, he's here for me, not you, me. Without the Jamaican accent, I'm not that. Well, you get it. You get that <laughs> shit, man. You know, so um, he meets a man, your man, and, um, you know, and man was like, you know, a sweet guy. Um, and uh, the reason why... I um I turned pro with him was because like you know me and my dad had conflict you know I never thought he liked me like you know when I was like you know a young child you know what I mean it's like you know um um never thinking that your hero your first hero your father likes you like you know I mean like you know that's damaging mm -hmm. you know so I always like you know had this like you know had this harboring resentment against my father you know and he can and he can like he can read that shit. He like he was like my father was like you know a polygraph machine. He could like he could read you, and like you know um, I knew at some point there was gonna be a conflict, and it wasn't gonna be good. Mm -hmm. So Emmanuel, he like offered me a, a, a like you know a a, um, a contract, and I said well, what well, like you know how much you offering me, and he said blah blah blah. I'm saying you got me, bro, you got me. But like, you know, what I wanted to do though, you know, after that, like, you know, illustrious, illustrious um amateur amateur career that like you know I'm lucky to have. I was I had hoped that like, you know, some university would um had offered me a, a scholarship, you know. Um, but no one did. Right. So, you know, I had to like you know, escape from that, like, you know, that uh, that uh, dysfunctional household of my father's man. Your pro career didn't really get off to the best of starts. Now, we've talked about you in this. Right, yeah. You, 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 right. you watch yeah. documentary, you, you'll see. That's but real. People have, people have pressure of going into the pro debut. Yes. You have an amateur background. Yes. So for you, what was it? Was, did you have the pressure of it was your professional debut, your signed to Manu right. Good, your father's, right. or to impress right. your father? Right. Was it, did you have so much on your shoulders, you were like, oh, this is too much? Is that maybe I played a small part in you losing your professional debut for people that don't know yeah. the Jerry Jones? Yeah. In retrospect, uh, in retrospect, man, like, you know, that's a very good point. Like, you know, I, really, I never really examined my, uh, well, like, I know why I lost to Jerry Jones, like, in my first pro fight. Mm -hmm. You know, although like you know Jerry Jones, like you know he had he had four or five fights. Um, I think it was like four and one. You know, he, you know on paper he wasn't very much, mm -hmm. but he would go into like you know what's termed as a spoiler, and beat a lot of people. You know, but like you know, cut back to uh, um, uh, uh, the fight with Jerry and I, man. Like you know, I didn't know anything anything about Jerry Jones, and, and like you know, and more importantly, I didn't care anything about Jerry Jones. Mm -hmm. I.e., I didn't respect Jerry Jones. And uh, how many hands you got? How Two. many hands do I have? Two. You know what that means, right? Yeah. It's even fucking Steven. I forgot that rule. I forgot the rule, man. And like, you know, Jerry, like, you know, um, clocked me. He caught me with a shot I never saw. And that's the, that's the, um, um, the highest level of physical pain I've ever experienced in a fight. Wow. I was, I didn't know where I was. And when the referee, uh, the referee was um, Rudy Battle. When he stops the fight, I, I sit down on the stool <laughs> and he comes over to me and says, uh, you know where you are, son? I'm like, I'm in fucking Atlanta City. Yes, I know where the fuck I am, B. <laughs> yes. I mean, I should have said that, but like, I'm, blah, 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 you know, I'm like, I'm like, my man, of course I know where I am. I'm, 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 I'm I just lost yeah. my professional debut and I'm a big shot like, you know, a big shot, like, you know, amateur, blah, blah, blah. And Emmanuel Stewart, man, he would always say something like, you know, that made me kind of nervous. He would always, like, you know, say people um, who he would um, introduce me to, well, like, you know, this is the guy who's going to, like, you know, this is the guy who has the tools to beat Mike Tyson. And I'm thinking, Jesus fucking Christ. More pressure. That's more oh, pressure man. on your shoulders. That's Bam. Like Bam. You know, like, you know, and I knew that, like, you know, I knew that, Emmanuel Stewart believed in me, like, you know, just as much as he believed in any of his, like, you know, fighters. 
if not more so. Because, you know, like, you know, I mean, he saw my talent. And I was talented, man. But, like, you know, when he would, like, you know, drop those, like, when he would, like, uh, introduce me to people and, like, and, and, and say that about, like, you know, he's the only man who can beat Mike Tyson. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm barely out the fucking amateurs, B. Real seriously? But, like, you know, <laughs> I love the guy for that, man. Definitely. And, that's what I mean, though. Michael, is that the pressure yeah. that was on you, the, the pressure yeah. of Emmanuel Stewart saying you've got the tools to beat Mike Tyson, your father, <laughs> coming out the amateurs. I mean, sub subconsciously, you might not have felt yes. it at the time, but right. in retrospect, you might be going, well, maybe that did play a, a small part or a big part in why. And I can't deny that. I can't deny it. But like, you know, as an athlete, you know yourself, man, like, you know, particularly as a boxer, we can't like, you know, go down that fucking rabbit hole, man, and investigate that kind of shit. If we like, you know, were to go down that rabbit hole and talk about the, like, you know, and talk about the psychology of like, you know, how we think now, and we're boxing, we'd quit. Mm -hmm. Period. I know I would. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, after that loss in your pro debut, it took you yeah. it was nearly two years for you to step back in the ring. Why? Why? Done, why did you long live? Yeah. You've done your homework, bro. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm impressed. Like I said, it was, a, it was the, the documentary. I watched it. I said, yeah. I'm in bed. Yeah. And I, was, I put them down. I went, oh, cool, a boxing documentary. Yeah. So I was boxing. I put it on. Right. I was like, Michael Bent he, right. he knocked out Tommy Morrison. I put the Netflix right. off my own. And it was just this. It's not just the story beginning in boxing and your boxing. Yeah. yeah. We'll get on to it, but it's the story after boxing that I'm right. fascinated exactly. about. Yeah. So it was like this whole big story. And I was like, wow. Like, I, I, become, I want to say I'm a fan. Like, I'm a fan. I, I really, really appreciate and. I appreciate that, brother. No, no, like, I, I, I like appreciate I said, I that, man. I emailed you, I messaged you on Twitter, I yeah. emailed you, and I thought, yeah. I, I, want, I want to know this guy's story for myself. I want to right. hear it from your mouth. Right. No, I appreciate that, amazing. man. So, what, I'll go back to my question. No, it's all good. <laughs> That's all good. Well, it took you nearly two years to get back into the ring. Um, why was that? Did you just think, oh, shit, I'm done, I can't box no more? Or did. Was it like time to reflect or did you reflect? think? Reflect? What was going through your mind? Well, my friend, um, uh, um, I was engaged in not like, you know, level 15 or, you know, like Charles Manson type of behavior. Mm. But like, you know, I was like, you know, doing, I was doing, uh, I was engaged in behavior like, you know, that, 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 that was counter to what, I had experienced or what I had been as an amateur, you know, cause like, you know, I lived like you know, a relatively clean life um, as an amateur, like, you know, and you know, I'm out there after I lost to Jerry, man, I'm, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm hitting the bars and I'm, I'm medicating myself mm. because that pain is like, you know, it's like, it's, it's hard because like, you know, all those, as you mentioned, all those expectations, man, like, you know, they can like, they can, they can even like, you know, push you forward and inspire you or fucking sink you. And they sunk you. Um, really so like, Michael, yeah. Did you, a deep, did you fall into a depression after that loss, your debut loss? Did you fall into a depression? Yeah. Depression? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, you know, but once again, like, you know, I wasn't able to like, you know, to admit that. You know, and back then, then well, yeah. But back then, it's not like nowadays depression. They've been, nobody That's saw right. depression as an illness. Right, right. Now, right. right. now it, you, right. Deal with it, you deal with it by yourself. That's it. That's it. That's it. Like, you know, back then, it's like, you know, back, the, back then, if you said, like, you know, that you were in pain or like, you know, you, you, you know, um, or you're depressed, they say, like, yeah, man, well, grow the fuck up, man. Mm -hmm. Grow some balls. I'm like, okay. Like, you know, like, and I knew that, mm -hmm. which is why, like, you know, it was hard for me to, like, you know, admit that, you know, um, because I remember one time after I lost to Jerry Jones, man, so I'll never forget this thing. Um, I had an aunt, and she would always take me to her job in the city, you know, meet, like, you know, the uh, like employees, blah, blah, blah. They were like big boxing fans, blah, 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 right? And one down, and, and after the Jerry Jones fight, uh, maybe about a month after, you know, she takes me down there to like, you know, just to hang out. And there was a guy who was a massive bo boxing fan, right? And he saw me, and he looked at me. He obviously saw the Jerry Jones fight, and I lost. And he saw me and looked at me with a look of fucking complete disdain. Like I had, I'm like, Fumba. And he never, he never spoke to me. But the look he gave was like, look at this piece of shit. I'm like, did you fucking invest money in me, bro? Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Like, I'm thinking this, though. Like, I never addressed it. Yeah. I'm thinking, 
what the, why do you think you have the goddamn nerve to fucking judge me, man? But like, you know, I couldn't look, you know, I couldn't admit that then. I couldn't express, you know, I couldn't express that then. You know, but it was so fucking painful, man. Like, and I felt everywhere I went, I felt like, you know, that people like that were judging me. If I go to a boxing gym, I would hear like, you know, I would think like, you know, people are judging me. You know, um, if I go in the supermarket, the people who know me, you know, look, look at the guy, that's, got, that's, got, that's the big shot amateur got knocked out. Okay, right. So, you know, that, uh, that uh, 22 month uh, period, man, like, you know, I think it was good for me, but like, you know, the best thing, like, you know, you know what saved me, um, my man? What saved me was uh, I had a friend, uh, his name was Paul Fucolaro. And Paul uh, was like, you know, he, he dabbled in the boxing game. Well, he was my sponsor as an amateur. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he got a phone call from Mickey Duff asking if uh, I would uh, be a sparring partner for Gary Mason, right? And Paul calls me and says, Mike, like, you know, Mickey Duff wants to, like, you know, hire you as a sparring partner for Gary Mason, blah, blah, blah. Gary Mason is number five um, heavyweight contender in the world. I'm like, fuck no, man. I don't want to do that. Why? You know, I had a job. I had uh, a job um, at um, at this hospital, uh, Long Island Jewish Hospital. I was like uh, working for the uh, essential sterile department, and I loved it. I loved it. You know, but like you know, over time, um, I, like you know, little voices said, "My man, you, you know, you don't belong here, bro. You don't belong here. Come on." Over time, yeah, I heard like this little voice, man. Dude, really seriously, you don't belong here, bro. I'm not saying like you know, I'm better. I was better than those people. But like you know, I had something like you know, to, you know, to do to achieve. You know, so did, and, uh, did it take you time to get your confidence back? Then was it a confidence man. as well? Was it like now after going back to the gym, gradually building your confidence to say, "Yeah, right, give me a second crack at this. Let's do it." Yeah. Like, yeah, that's right. That's right. Like you know, and like you know, I have to pay homage to uh, Mickey Duff, who uh, hired me as a sparring partner, and uh, I have to uh, give a uh, homage to. Um, Gary Mason, man, because like, you know, when I found out that Gary, when Paul told me that Gary was number five contender, my butt got this tight, bro. <laughs> right? But like, you know, I knew like, once again, like, you know, I kept hearing those voices, man, like, Mike, you don't belong here to stop him. You don't belong working in the hospital, man, mm -hmm. you know. So like, you know, I, I said, uh, Paul, like, you know, I'll take the flight. So I, I flew out to, um, they had a camp in, um, uh in florida at this really like you know fancy hotel man and um i'm sparring with gary mason the number five guy in the world contender in the world and i'm doing well with him right maybe like you know maybe after a month gary and i get really tight so one day uh well, we go out to breakfast and i ask gary i'm like gary check us out bro don't bullshit when we spar you take it easy on me and he starts laughing. I'm like, well, okay, great. All right, cool. Thank you, man. Cool. Got it. Yeah, you know, so. So, you know, you, that, so you knew that he was taking it easy on you when he started laughing sort of thing, yeah. No, no, quite the contrary. I, no, 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 he, he wasn't was taking it easy. That's right, that's right. right. Like, you know, but I was just like, you know, I was, I was performing at a level where um, I had to perform at. Mm -hmm. If not, like, you know, he chased me out the fucking ring. And like, you know, uh, uh, that like, you know, that did, when he said like, when he started laughing and didn't answer, my confidence like, you know, shot up. You know, so I get, you know, I gotta give like, you know, homage to uh, Gary for that one, man. I know he's gone now, but like, you know, he can hear me. He can that's hear what me. I mean, that's definitely for sure, yeah. So that was the confidence and that gave you the confidence like we spoke about to finally think, right, that's me, yeah. I'm, I'm doing it. Cause you racked up. Yeah. yeah. I think you racked up 11 wins after that, and then you got your big shot, or 10 wins right. after that, and then you got your big shot against Tommy Morrison. And Tommy Morrison, mm. again, he's mm. not here, but yeah, he was he, he was knocking out everybody, big puncher. Oh boy! Is, is, it, is it fair to say that you you got sent in against Tommy as like cannon fodder to just be that? Of name? course I was. Of yeah. course I was. But you, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you know, like you know, you know I, I, I accept that. That's part of the game. Yeah. But like you know, um, something that you may not. Uh, that you may not know is that um, uh, Michael Katz, who was a, a great um, uh, boxing uh, writer for the, for the uh, Daily News back in the days, right? Michael Katz had covered me as an amateur, right? And uh, as a pro, um, as an earlier pro. 
And Michael Cass was on the phone call with uh, Tommy Morris's manager, uh, Bill Caton, right? Uh, HBO had an open day, had an open, like, you know, uh, um, uh, an opening for a fight before Tommy's fight with Lance Lewis for $8.5 million, blah, blah, blah. blah. And um, Tommy lobbied for him to fight. Tommy lobbied for them to um, sign me to fight him. Bill Caton was against the fight. Bill Caton was against, like, you know, uh, uh, Tommy fighting me. Um, when um, Emmanuel Stewart, who wasn't like, who was a man be then, when Emmanuel Stewart uh, find out, Emmanuel Stewart found out that um, Tommy was uh, fighting me, um, or I was fighting Tommy when Manny went to a uh, top rank in Vegas, right? And uh, Bob Aaron says to him, like, you know, uh, Emmanuel, like, uh, uh, guess who uh, Michael Ben's fighting? Tommy Morrison. And the Manuel Stewart says to him, this is on my son. <laughs> Emmanuel, <laughs> Emmanuel Stewart says to him, that's a bad fight. It's a bad fight. Bob Arum, Bob Arum says, um, why? Emmanuel said, because Michael Ben has so much pride, man. Think about that. Mm. There's so much pride. <laughs> yeah. And it should. And it should. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's talk about the fight then. It took you yeah. less than a round. Mm. When, you, when you had dropped him for the first time, Tommy, and... What was going through your head? Did you enter that fight? Did you go through them ropes before that first bell and think, I'm winning this? Did you have that in your head, that, that sort of confidence, that positivity in your mind that you were going to go in there and stop Tommy? Or was it the fact that when you dropped him for the first time and you had him hurt, were you thinking, I'm doing it, I'm done, I'm going to win this? Hmm. What was going through your mind through that whole sort of, the ring walk and that sort of round yeah. up the lesson around to actually stop yeah. Tommy Morrison? Yeah. Tommy and I, like, you know, although we never fought as amateurs, we were like, you know, contemporaries in the amateurs, but he wasn't on my level. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but like, you know, um, I always say, I always tell people like, you know, at certain, at the elite level, the elite level of the amateurs is just as competitive as the elite level of the pros. You go more rounds, but like, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the uh, level of talent, it's, it's, it's there. You know, but um, I'm not to like, you know, I'm not to like, you know, not to disparage Tommy, but like, you know, he just wasn't like, you know, he wasn't at that level. And again, like, you know, at that elite level in the amateurs, there are a lot of politics. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was a guy who was around for like three or four years. So like, you know, there's a lot of politics you know, that, that are involved in that, man. But um, um, I knew that um, uh, stylistically, um, if... I was on my game and remained sharp. Um, I had a chance about boxing him because that was a game plan. That was, you know, that was a game plan uh, employed by uh, and uh, and crafted by uh, Adam Stock Muhammad. Just to box this guy, pick him up, take it easy, take your time, make him find you, make him make him pay, you know. But um, uh, in the uh, opening stanza, uh, Tommy, like you know, he's a, he's a bull, man. You know, he, like, he only knows one way. The only time that he didn't fight the way with, well, the only time that he didn't fight with all, with that much passion was when he fought George Foreman. There was, or the smart fight. Two fights before you, or was that a fight before you? Kind yeah, of that was fight, like, I think that was like two fights before me, two, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like, you know, he was brilliant in that fight. You know, but um, 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 George made a statement saying like, you know, the only reason like, you know, that uh, I knocked him out, I knocked Tommy out, not easy, but because, because like you know, Tommy didn't respect me. Well, that's that's not my fault, me. That's not, that's not my fault, man. But like once again, like you know, not to uh, disparage Tommy, but like you know, um, um, when he uh, in the first stanza of the first round, I get clipped with a left hook, mm -hmm. right, and I was out technically. This is like this is like you know, this was like you know, a level nine on a ten on a ten scale left hook. And uh, the only reason why I didn't like, you know, get knocked out was because of Jerry Jones, the Jerry Jones fight. Oh, wow. Yeah, because right away, I, I pl right away when I got hit here, I knew like, you know, that I was in trouble. And right away I said, well, uh, a voice, oh no, not again, mm -hmm. not again. 
Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So like, you know, like, you know, so like, you know, I'm, I'm like, you know, you know, boxers, man, like, you know, fighters, man, we're like, um, we're like, uh, um, tightrope, 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 tightrope walkers, man. You know what I'm saying? We got like, fucking like, right? You yeah. know, but, um, yeah, like, you know, so, so in that moment, you know, um, in training camp for like maybe six weeks, six, seven weeks, like Eddie Mustafa said, and this is and this is uh, this is what make um, what makes um, Eddie Mustafa such a uh, insightful trainer, man. No one ever told me this, and I've been trained by someone like you know, like some of the greats. Yeah. You know. um, Eddie Mustafa say uh, would say to me at some point, Tommy is going to hit you and hurt you. What are you going to do, right? And he would like he would just like drop that if we if we were like you know going running he would he would drop it you know not the nothing like you know over the top like you know like, like you know like rah 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 but like you just like drop it man it's like you know a piece of intellectual information right a, a piece of like you know uh, intellectual information man and um uh when Tommy like you know catches what are you gonna do you gonna time up you gonna parry you gonna dance around the ring right and like you know uh, that not. Yeah, no, no. Eddie's a fucking genius, bro. And he kept like he kept he kept he kept he like he would ask me that like you know at the at the in the weirdest opportunities, man. If we're out to dinner, Mike, check us out. Um, if Tommy catches you with a shot and hurts you, and he's gonna hurt you, what you gonna do? And walk away. <laughs> like, okay. What was your answer then? What was your answer when Eddie gave you the questions when he would ask you? Would you say I'm gonna stand and fight? I'm gonna. Tie him up. What was your answer when Eddie did ask you them questions, or did you have? I didn't know. I didn't know. Mm. I didn't know. I thought I knew, but like you know, I don't. I don't like. I can't remember answering. You know, uh, uh, I I can't remember like you know, answering Eddie uh, definitively because because I didn't know. Yeah. But once, like you know, once I started watching Tommy's tapes, Eddie like uh, Stan Hoffman was my manager, and um, Stan got me like you know a stack of. Um, Tommy Morrison videotapes, and man, I would watch those fucking things uh, ad like ad nauseum. I knew every time he took his, you know, I could like you know, I could like you know, time when he took a step back. A little so nuances that we do. That's right, those nuances, man. Like you know, I could tell like you know if he threw his jab and he bring it down, or if he threw his jab, he bring it to his chin. Um, I could tell also. When he hurt somebody, one thing like you know, one thing that I uh, uh, I picked up like like which was like loud, man. When he hurt somebody, he stopped breathing. Or when he got hurt, he stopped breathing. So you know, after the uh, um, um, and Eddie like you know would also like uh, um, drop little season like you know my man like you know you have to you have to um, um, punch in between his punches. Okay. And like you know, once again, like you know, it's not something like you know that's uh, that's uh, regimented, but like you know, it's something like you know, if I believe in it, you know, if I believe in like you know the the drops of um, insight that um, a trainer is giving me, I'm just like I'm going to like you know process that thing myself, yeah, and, and turn it over, yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it, and like you know, uh, hitting Tommy with the right hand was like you know, hitting in between the punches. And that's what hurt him. He, he never saw it. Definitely not. Like, you, like I said, you stopped him in the first round. Now, yeah. when the referee waved the fight off, Michael, yeah, can you remember your emotion, your initial thought? Like, what was running through your body? What was running through your head when you'd won that fight? Now, can, can I say what I was thinking when I watched that documentary? Yeah. I was thinking, yeah. his dad. I was thinking, after him learning about what your father was like, I was like, his dad's going to love him, man. His dad's going to fucking be mm. so proud of him that he's done. He's world heavyweight champion of the world, right. man. Right. Oh, you know what, though, my man? Let me tell you something. Like, if my fam, my father wasn't at the fight. My father was in Florida, right? But like, you know, if my father had given me a call mm. and been like, you know, yay, Mike, good for you, blah blah blah. Like, you know, at that stage of my life, you know what I'm saying to my father? Fuck you, man. Wow. No, okay. you weren't there for me. Like, you know, when I was fucking like when I had my face in the dirt, my friend. You know, so like, you know, so so. I don't think like, you know, I don't think, I don't think that, well, like this is then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have told him like, you know, I don't think that you really want me to succeed. Because if you did, you wouldn't have pushed me the way you did into something that I didn't, I didn't want to do. 
But like, you know, once again, like, you know, I understand the dynamic of like, you know, how he was raised, like, you know, like, you know, he's stuck in that framework. Thankfully, like, you know, I'm not, I'm not. So, you know, but, um, uh, What was your initial feel, emotion? Yeah. Were you just like, were you just ecstatic? Like, was this like, cause it's hard for me to read what was going on because you never wanted to box. It wasn't a passion of yours. So was it really a lifelong dream to become world heavyweight champion? Mm -hmm. like, so what was going through your head when you won it? No, sir, man. Um, I cried, yeah. you know, I was crying. I was crying because like, you know, um, once again, like, you know, just because I don't like something, it doesn't mean I can't find value in something, right? And, you know, if I'm gonna do something, I've always been like this, like, well, you know, I've always tried to be like this. If I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it on my fucking terms, not on your terms, mm -hmm. right? Now that, kind of, now, that, I get, now, that gets complicated, it's like, you know, in life, like you have people like, you know, who are gonna try and dominate you, you know? But um, um, in regards to, uh, my emotions after I beat Tommy, man, like, you know, I, the first, one of the first things I thought about, you know, I didn't express this though. Um, one of the first things uh, was, this is some bullshit, B. This is some bullshit, because like, you know, had I gotten knocked out, like I was supposed to, like, like, like it was planned. Not like, you know, not planned, but like, you know, had I gotten knocked out in front of Tommy's fans pre his his big fight with Lance Lewis and shit, like you know, I'm a bum mm. for everybody. Was this like a double fight? Was it like a fingers up to everybody? So I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you know, I resented like you know, I resent like you know, once again like you know, and this stems from like you know, my relationship with my father as a young man, as a youngster, as a baby even. I resent like you know. When people like you know clap and shit, man, and I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't need that shit, B. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like you know, you want to show that you know that you uh, appreciate me, just sit down and talk to me. That's appreciation. Tell me like you know, like you know, tell me like you know how I inspired you and what that, and how like you know you can inspire me to inspire you. Period. You know, I mean that's a, that's a hard approach, but like you know that's that's like you know I I, I sincerely believe like you know that um that um. Uh, my way of thinking, like you know, is the way is 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 the reason why I'm uh, is the reason why I'm alive, man. You know, yeah. like I say, like I was, like I said, forgive me for being ignorant. The reason I only right. knew your name was because of the Tommy Morrison fight, mm -hmm. Tommy Morrison fight, and then it was obviously the fight against Herbie Hyde. Yes, he was a young upstart. Yes. He was yes, the next best thing. And you took that fight straight after. You never took a voluntary defense or anything. No. Like, that. like oh, a nice easy warm up fight as world champion. No. Going, you, know, you went, I'll fight her behind in London. Now you came to his backyard. Yes. Why? Why? Because I was getting seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, the okay. most I ever made. Like you know, but like I mean, dude, it's all about money, man. Yes. You know, like like you know, you know, uh, um, uh, I knew, I knew though. You know, after I fought uh, Tommy Morrison, I did a uh, interview with a reporter from one of your magazines. Um, I forget the name of it, man, but like, I forget the, uh, the name of the magazine, but like, you know, I, you know, I said to him, like, hey, check this out. This moment, my moment, like, you know, as a world champion, that's going to be minute, movie. Mm -hmm. It's minute. It's not going to let, it's not going to last long and long. I knew that. I didn't, I didn't recognize, like, you know, I didn't feel that, like, you know, it would, like, you know, be that short, though by losing to Herbie. And like, you know, my man hurt me and beat me legitimately. But the thing because, is, yeah. I'm just sorry, sorry for interrupting you there, Michael, but the thing is, yeah. the, you won that world title and then you came against Herbie Hyde. And I keep going mm. back to that passion type of thing. It's like, when you won that world title, did you think, I'm there, I'm at the top now. Like, I, I, no, I, no, 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 no. Did you enter that fight like, I'm gonna win, I'm gonna knock this guy out as well, the same as Tommy Morrison? That was like you know, if the, the guy you see fighting Tommy Morrison is is the real guy. Mm. He's the hungry guy. He's a desperate guy. He's a guy like you know with something to fucking prove. The guy you see in Millwall Soccer Stadium, like you know doing the Sugar Ray Leonard fucking like you know um, um, gesture to fucking hurt behind. That's that's not that, that that's the bullshit guy right there. Yeah. He comes for the fucking emotions. You know, like but like but. No, but still, like, you know, I'm getting, 
pay for like you know to a to a to a um, fight this um, uh, contender from the UK. So you know, obviously it's, it's documented, well documented as well in the documentary on Netflix and if people yeah. that seen the fight uh, against you and Herbie Hyde that you 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 got hospitalized for a, a few days after yeah. that. You, 96 hours, man. Mm. I think what, what was the thing? What was, I didn't quite get the, the injury. What actually happened to you? Was it a brain injury? Did you, what was sort of like? Um, uh, it was what you guys over in the, in, in the UK called the uh, uh, bleeding on the brain. Bleeding on the brain. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, ironically enough, one of my dearest friends as an amateur was a guy named Gerald McClellan. You know oh, about yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Gerald, when he got hurt, we had this he had like he had the same neurosurgeon as I did, Dr. John Sutcliffe. Wow. You know, so uh, you know it's it's it, you know it's it's a it's a it's, it's a uh, bit of a uh, ironic um um blah blah blah, but like you know we survived that thing, man. And it was close. It was close. It was like you know it was like you know at a certain time I was told it was like knock and tip. It was like. But, you know. And going back to your father, when, when, when you lost that, what mm. conversation did you have with your father? I don't know, he, you said he was, I knew in the documentary, you said he was out right. of the world and you, he, I think your manager called him and he, I can't do the Jamaican accent, but you said right. that he called you something along them lines or something like that. And it kind of hurt me for some reason. I'm like, yeah. I don't know if, you, no. if you've got it in you, yeah. can you sort of reiterate or tell the story of what was, what was said? Right. My father, like, uh, he was in Florida at the time when I was um, fighting Herbie or, like, you know, uh, convalescing in the uh, hospital in London, man. Like, you know, and, like, you know, people from, like, you know, uh, different communities, like, you know, they communicate, they speak, blah, 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 blah. Say, oh, like, you just see the fight, blah, blah, blah. And people, like, you know, my father, like, you know, is a very uh, gregarious guy, man. You know, he can, like, if my father um, walked into a room, he fucking lights it up. Mm -hmm. He's also like, you know, a fierce, like, he's very charismatic. He's also a fierce human being, you know, but he's like, you know, but the, um, people like, you know, like to like tell him things, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I guess he was out one night. One of my family members told me this. Uh, I guess he was out one night uh, and he watched the fight and he heard like, you know, that um, I was in the hospital <laughs> and my man said, yeah, let the blood clap why I did. Okay, okay, nice. Said, well, well, okay, that's fucking sweet. <laughs> Jeez, what a gem, Dad. But once again, bro, like you know, back then it it it, it was profoundly painful. Yes. But like you know, I got, I got like you know, I got that um, where my father's pain stems from. You know what I mean? He couldn't like you know he wouldn't dare say that to me. Well, maybe he would. <laughs> Maybe you will, but like, you know, um, um, I don't think he would have the courage to say that to me, like, you know, not the country, but like, you know, uh, I don't think he would have the heart to say that, like, you know, um, um, if I was like, you know, if he was like, you know, at the bedside in the hospital. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't think he would. Because like, you know, like, you know, no matter how you slice it, I'm his son. I look like him. I talk like him. I have his like, you know, I have some of his ways. I'm more disciplined than he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, but yeah. Obviously, that was your last fight in, in boxing. Yeah. And I, yeah. like I said to you, I became sort of like interested in the story and stuff like because mm. you've done so much outside of boxing after this. I mean, you've, right. you've I didn't even know this to be honest. I've seen the movie Ali. I've seen the movie Ali. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> I didn't even know you played Sonny Liston right. alongside yeah, Smith in that thing. So, you, yeah. I mean, was it always a passion of yours, a dream of yours to go into acting, or did you just fall into that? How did that come, come about? You know what, man? Um, let me just say, like, first of all, bro, like, you know, um, I'm probably the luckiest fucking boxer you'll ever talk to. Did you hear what I said? Yeah, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm probably the luckiest fucking boxer you'll ever talk to, Jim, because, like, you know, the people who I've met in my life, the people, like, you know, who, like, uh, um, opened doors for me, put me on the right path to, like, you know, like, Elevate my game as a as an actor as an artist. Man, like, you know, you know, I couldn't pay them, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, um, uh, people like uh, I met um, I met Muhammad Ali. Um, <laughs> I, I met Muhammad, man. Um, not soon after I got home from England, after I lost to Herbie Hyde, 
I got a phone call from uh, this uh, boxing journalist named Tom Hauser. You ever oh, heard of Tom Hauser, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, and I had no idea who he was, right? And he said, like, you know, you know he's a, like, you know, um, um, soft-spoken soft man, blah, blah, blah. I said, hey, Michael, how you doing? Like, I'd like to have dinner with you. I'm like a boxer with a I'm a boxer writer and blah, 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 you know, and I find you very interesting. Great. So we went, you know, we had dinner. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Right. There we are. There we are. You know, and uh, we connected, man. And uh, it's like, Tom's just like this beautiful, like, you know, intellectual guy who like, you know, who gets it, you know. Um, so uh, about, we stayed in contact about two months later. He says, Michael, um, I'm um, having dinner with some friends later on in or Madison Avenue or something like that. Someone like that. Uh, I'd like to invite you. I went down there. Tom and I are like um, uh, having like, you know, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, not daiquiris because Tom doesn't drink. Uh, we're having appetizers. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in walks Muhammad, man. Muhammad Ali and his wife. Um, his current wife, uh, I forget her name. Um, and I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> I'm a Muhammad Ali head. Mm -hmm. I, 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 like, you know, um, growing up, um, uh, my favorite athletes, athletes were, there was a guy named Chris Chambliss mm -hmm. who played uh, for the New York Yankees as a first baseman, and I adored this guy. And there was Roberto Duran, who I adored. Yes. And it was Muhammad Ali who I bowed down to. Well, see, Michael, Robert Duran's one of my favorite photos. And I don't know if you can uh, fight us, but I don't know if you can see that. I've got Muhammad Ali tattooed on my arm there. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've got the, bee. I've got the bee there and I've got the butterfly. Whoa. Like the butterfly. So <laughs> I love Muhammad Ali. Yeah. I'm sorry, brother. What did you say? I said I love Muhammad Ali as well. Yes. So yes. That would be a dream of mine if he just walked in and I'm having an appetizer. Like, Oh shit, there's my husband. <laughs> yes, it was bizarre, man. Like, you know, and um, uh, this, is, this is like uh, in like maybe um, the latter part of 94. It's like, you know, like six, seven months after Herbie Hyde. Like, you know, and like Tom, like I, I think that Tom, like, you know, had a sense that maybe I was going down that depression, like, you know, lane. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just went like, he just like, you know, chose to um, befriend me, man, befriend me and get me out the house. That's a, that, that saved me. That saved me. What a lovely thing to do. Lovely gesture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So people like Tom Hauser, um, and, and, and if, if not for Tom Hauser, I'm not meeting a uh, producer who's a, who's a great friend of mine, uh, Fred Berner, who turned me on to Ron Shelton. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's all about like, you know, Alliances and like and allies, man, and, and like I'm and luck. I'm fucking lucky. No, oh, I'm lucky. You see that now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I want. I want to ask you. That, I want to ask this question. Mm. You never had passion for boxing growing up, but you said you can find what you need out of it, sort of thing. Yes. Do you have a passion? Because you've directed in Broadway. You've directed, mm -hmm. you've directed a show on Broadway. You've starred in yeah. Ali with Will Smith. You've yeah. done other acting stuff. Like that. You, you've done writing yeah. gigs as well. Yeah. Do you have a passion for this side of the game, the sport, the, the acting, the writing, the directing? Have you found a passion in life now? Absolutely. I found where I belong, man. That's like, you know, point. and yeah. And like, you know, that's, 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 if, like, you know, once again, like, you know, when I was in, after my amateur boxing career had like, you know, uh, taken off, I don't know what I would have, like, you know, I don't know what I would have um, done, but if I had gotten like a scholarship to like, you know, some university, I'd have, I'd have found theater. Mm -hmm. I'd have found it. Cause like, you know, like, you know, like, you know, acting is like, I mean, uh, boxing is fucking theater. Right? Did you not say in the documentary that every box is a liar along them? Oh, lines? oh you damn right, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Box every box is, right. Cause like, you know, we did because, like you know, um, uh, what I meant, uh, what I meant by that, I'm glad you brought that up, man. Because, like you know, um, I was talking with a woman, a friend of mine, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, we had a thing from like, we had a thing like years ago, right? So we we reconnected, and uh, I said so. She watched the documentary, right? 
And you know, we 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 had like you know, a little disagreement about something and shit. <laughs> and then she goes off on me and said, "Well, you a fucking liar anyway." That's what you said in the document. I'm like, whoa, 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 easy, whoa, easy. I, I mean, I'm not lying about that. I'm saying like you know, boxers have to lie because we have to deny shit to ourselves about pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, yeah, but like you know, so um. um like if, I, if, I was to, if, if I was to interview after a fight, if this was, I don't know, let's say there's a Tommy Morrison fight, we'd done this interview, I'd be like, yeah. did he hit you with that left hook? And you'd be like, no, nah, man, I didn't even feel it. That, that's what you mean. Like, exactly, that's right. That's right. My right. idea, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yes. I, got, I, got, I got what you meant. Yeah. I found that quite interesting because I know a lot of fighters yeah. nowadays who I interview, like I interview other top fighters nowadays, yeah. stateside and in the UK, and yeah. Did he hurt you one bit? No, I didn't hurt you, but I seen your knees buckle and everything yeah. like that. You just told me so you hurt. Me you yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. You know, but like, you know, um um that you know, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, for them. You know, because like, you know, that uh, that uh, like I mean like you know, because like, you know, admitting stuff like that means you're weak. Mm -hmm. Now to me, to me it's like nah, be like, you know, when when I'm when I admit or when men admit, particularly men. Like us, when we admit they were fucking in pain, that isn't a sign of weakness. It's a sign of courage, and like you know, and like you know, it inspires like other people, like you know, like us who want to admit some shit that they can, that they're afraid to, you yeah, know? Sure. Yeah. Well, Mike, like I, I think you've done, you've worked with HBO as well doing commentary. Do you still keep you up to date with today's heavyweights and stuff like that? Do you still keep up to date? You know. Well, the only reason, honestly, man, the only reason why I do keep up is because, like, you know, I never know when I'm going to get a uh, a phone call from my manager saying, like, you know, hey, Mike, there's some people, like, you know, who want to audition you for, like, maybe a commentary gig. You know, so I got to, like, you know, have to be, like, you know, I have to stay abrupt of, like, you know, of, um, you, you know, the names and, of, of, like, you know, or, like, people in the game. You know, and I do, I do. So can I ask you what your thoughts were on Tyson Fury and Wilder and Anthony Joshua? These guys, can I ask you your opinion? And who do you think is the number one heavyweight just now at this stage? Uh, in terms of talent? Talent? Um, talent? Yeah. 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 In terms of talent, like, you know, I, I like Tyson, man. I like Tyson. And like, you know, we've never seen like, you know, just like we've never seen a big man at 220 pounds move like Muhammad Nadi lit, uh, Muhammad Nadi like it move like a goddamn ballerina, mm -hmm. right? We've never seen a big man. The closest thing that, well, no, no, no. I think um, uh, the most. Um, dangerous and talented big man out right now clearly is is tyson fury you know what i mean like you know um um it's like you know and he's not just um so productive because he's big he's productive because he's talented mm -hmm. and he's skillful which is two different like you know talent and skill are two different things man you come into the world with talent and you fucking deliver uh, de uh, uh develop skill and he has like he's a master craftsman He's a master crass. Well, let, let me ask you this thing. Let's, yeah. talk, let's talk right now about Tyson Fury facing Anthony Joshua in December. Mm -hmm. As a former fighter, as a boxing mm -hmm. fan, mm -hmm. as a writer, mm -hmm. how do you see that fight going? I think, I, you know what? Um, no, let me not like, you know, even say that because like that, that, that means I'm, I'm tipping around, I'm tiptoeing around the goddamn stuff. Uh, on the subject, um, I think uh, Joshua stops. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I think Fury stops Joshua. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So in a similar fashion to Wilder, do you think? Or um, no, not no, 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 because like you know, uh, Fury. I mean, uh, uh, Joshua and Wilder are two different fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Josh. Uh, uh, F um, um, my guy. Fury. Uh, wow. <laughs> Damn. Uh, 
the black kid, man. <laughs> Wilder, Joshua. Wilder, wow, oh boy, I was oh boy. Oh boy, that's the weed I'm a bit smoking. No, 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 it's not the weed. No, no, it's not the It's thing. legal now, is it not? <laughs> no, it is, right. I'm in Vermont, like it's very legal in Vermont. Um, but no, man, um, Wilder, um, I like him a lot. But he was like, you know, he's limited as a boxer. You know, he has one, he has like one, two punches, man. But like, you know, he's not very nuanced. He's, he's raw. You know, in my estimation, like, you know, he's a, he's a work still in progress. You know what I mean? Um, but people like uh, um, uh, Joshua, Joshua also is a work still in progress. You know, he may look, he looks fantastic. But like, you know, you can tell, like I can tell. When he fights, um, his mechanics like you know aren't as fluid as uh, Fury's mechanics. You know what I mean? Like you know, and fluidity equals hand speed equals power. You know. Yeah. Let me ask you this because I know I've asked a few sort of older fighters that mm -hmm. do they have ever had itchy knuckles to come back? I'm not going to ask you that question because I don't think you've got itchy knuckles to make a return Shit. to boxing. <laughs> Shit. No, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> What's your why, thoughts? Why? Here's yeah. the question for you then, Michael. What is yeah. your thoughts on Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield? Surely you've seen clips of them hitting the bags, and they've actually agreed to do a four-round exhibition together. I mean, oh. thoughts. they're in your era, so a four-round exhibition between Mike and Evander, like you know, that'll be exciting. You know, um, uh, you know, but you know, it, 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 um. um I just think it's like hype, man. I don't believe it. I'm believing, you know, I don't believe it's gonna take place, but like if it does take place, like, you know, it'll be good for the sport, maybe, you know. But uh, I don't think like, you know, there's any um um aspects of danger um in this thing, you know, because they're gonna have a lot of, like you know, like the 16 ounce gloves on, 18 ounce gloves on, headgear, you know. So um if they just want to like, you know, do this thing as a public exercise, great for them. Good. You know, but like, you know, to consider either one of those guys making a comeback, comeback, um, no, that's, that's, that's heartbreaking me. Mm -hmm. I, get have, this, yeah. no, I get asked this question, though, would Tyson Fury beat Mike Tyson? Would Evander yeah. Holyfield beat Wilder? And I'm like, it's two mm. different ears. Because you look at the heavyweights exactly. in your day. In your day, the heavyweights were 6'3", stock yeah. of 220 pound guys. The yeah. heavyweights today, Wilder yeah. Seven, Joshua six six. That's right. Six nine. That's right. The headweights are different nowadays. Totally different yes. size and whatever. Do you know? Do you understand what I'm saying? So here's a no, question. I got you. I got how, you. How would you fare with today's heavyweights? Then? I wouldn't be in that list, bro. I would. My man, suck yourself. <laughs> no, no, no. Like you know, like you know. I'm not being modest, man. Like you know, as a heavyweight, as a professional heavyweight. You know, I may have like you know had my my moments with Evander Holyfield as a sparring partner, but like you know, sparring ain't being on the on the big stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I would give like you know Evander problems from time to time. But once again, like you know, that's sparring. Mm -hmm. You know, you like you know march a guy into the ring into in front of like you know thirty thousand people, forty five thousand people, like you know, and like you know he's being watched by like you know millions over the world, like you know that you know, that's gonna fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna fuck with you, man. You know, and but um, um, I would, you know, I, I wouldn't even like you know put myself in that category, like you know, as like you know, like um, um, in terms of like you know, great pros, man. I, you know. Final I, question before I let you go, Michael, because I know, yeah. and I want to say thank you so much for your time. I really, really, my pleasure, brother. Like I said, after watching that documentary, I don't just know you as the guy that yeah. beat Tony Morrison and lost to yeah. him behind anymore. It's yeah. been a fascinating story. Right, you're up in Vermont, you. you said you got stuck in Vermont. What projects have you got coming out? I mean, I know you're, you're a writer, director, actor. Yeah. You? <laughs> you have a spot for me? Do you have any acting gigs for me? I'm sorry, Trevor. Say have again, you have any acting gigs for me? I can act a little bit. You know what, man? Like, you know, interestingly enough, I just finished a, um, a voiceover gig for um, an Englishman. I think he works for BBC. You know, so, you well, know, um, um, and, uh, yeah, but like, you know, it's, 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 uh, uh, I'm working on that. Um, I came up paid to like, uh, to a pitch a play to a university up there, which, um, I'm going to be the lead in, uh, and I don't think I'll direct it, but like, you know, I'll probably like star in it, man. And, uh, I pitched a project 
um, I pre I pitched. I don't know if like you know my uh, manager wants me to mention this, but like you know, fuck it, I'm, I'm gonna mention it. <laughs> I pitched a, a TV show like uh, um, in LA like nine months ago. Um, it's a TV show about uh, it's just just like you know the t just like the uh, the the uh, Netflix documentary. Only the uh, character of me is played by like you know a fifteen year old girl. Oh wow! So yeah, so like you know, we pitched that um, as a as a series. Uh, and we're getting some heat, man. So like you know, knock on plaster, boy. We'll, you know, we'll get green lit, and uh, that thing pops off. I mean, you must have Will Smith's number now. You know, you can hit, call Will Again? Smith. You, you, I said you must have Will Smith's number. Surely you can give him a call. You know, you know what? It's, it's funny you should ask about Will. Smith. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> you know, real quick story, man. Like you know. When when and I met right on um, the set of um, Ali, yep, and like you know, he has profound respect for boxers, and uh, you know, like like every like you know every boxer actor I knew on the set they fell in love with the guy. He's a, he's a beautiful guy, man. Like you know, I was um, I was um, um, assigned by the director Michael Mann to be Will's assistant trainer. So Will would like, you know, take me, you know, with his family, like, you know, to places like Aspen. And he and I, like, you know, he and I are very competitive. Or we were very competitive back then, right? And like, you know, so we would like go out running, man, blah, blah, blah. And I would never let him beat me. If he did, like, he had to earn it. Yeah. You know? And then like, you know, I'm like, because my thing is like, you know, when we go running at six in the morning up those mountains in Aspen, Colorado, bro, you're running with Sonny Liston, mm. not Ali. I mean, like you're running with Sonny Liston, not Michael Bent. Yes. You know what I mean? So, like you know that that like you know that uh, that uh, that like you know made like you know our connection like you know uh, um, in the film like uh, you know a lot more profound, man. And uh, so, cut to last year, I hadn't seen Will in like 15 years. Wow. So last year, I'm on a set of um, no, I'm at a restaurant with my sister in Atlanta. Um, and uh, I see one of Will's um, hairstylists uh, in like this, this like restaurant, man. He said, yo, yo, you know, like, uh, why don't you like, you know, come down to the set tomorrow? Um, they were filming Bad Boys in Atlanta. So like, you know, the uh, kid just um, invited me down to the set, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting chills right now, bro. And uh, Will saw me. He had watched the documentary, bro. The Netflix documentary. He watched it. I think like, you know, a week before, the night before, blah, blah, blah. And he, and he said to me, and shit, he said, man, first of all, he fucking, he hugged me and shit and gave me a kiss on the fucking cheek, bro, right? Oh, my. And he said, man, your, um, what did he say? Your, your, your testimony, man. He said, your testimony was like Jesus, blah, 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 upon the cross. Now, I'm not really religious, man. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm not really like a religious guy. But like, you know, when he said that, I was like, holy fuck. He got it. He got it, man. He got it. And like, you know, a tear or two rolled down my eyes. But like, I love that dude, man. I love that dude. So yeah. So see what you see what you do when you like, you know, when you, you know, when you mention people I, I love. I just go off, I just go off on a tangent, bro. Beautiful, man. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm like I said, man, I, I... I love to hear it because, like I said, yeah. before, after watching, and I please, if you haven't gone watch the, the documentary on Netflix, it's called Losers. You're the first sort of episode on it. Yeah, go and watch it because, like I said, it's a beautiful story that you've got. Like, thank you, thank you. Man. Don't want to box, become a world champion, then turn right. into acting, writing, directing, all this yeah. sort of stuff. It's right. it's fascinating, and I mean, the people you've met in your life, I can only just yeah. dream of Will Smith, Muhammad Ali. That's too so. Oh, anyway. dude. That's and could I give like you know, I'm, uh, not to cut you off there, bro? Could like, could I give like you know, a few people some shout outs, man? Oh, she can, yes. On you go. All right, so 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 without uh, this cat named um, Mickey Doozy, he was the director of the Netflix uh, docu series, man. Like you know, without that cat, I'm not involved. And without um, this writer from uh, from Canada, um, oh boy. 
Wow. He's not going to be pleased with me, bro. Oh, shit. Anyway. Oh, my God. I forget this cat's name, man. Anyway, oh, anyway. But Mickey Doozy, man, like, you know, uh, uh, big up, big ups to you, man. Uh, Mickey um, has been nominated for two two Emmy Awards for this uh, this series, man. So. Oh, well, perfect. Like, Lovely. Good. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed he wins then. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, like, um, I don't know um, the status of the uh, Emmy Awards because it's like, you know, Covert night. 19 thing, but like you know, just to be nominated, man, is a big deal, so yeah, that's cool. Yeah, man. Well, I've got my fingers crossed for the man because, like I said, I enjoyed the documentary, and, uh, definitely loved your story, Michael. Like Thank I said you, before, I'm a fan now because I love, like I said, the story was amazing. I'm going to emphasize that again go and watch the docu series on Netflix, please do. It's called Losers, Michael. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You, my pleasure. I really enjoyed getting you hearing from your own mouth. Your story yes, again. Sir. Yes, sir. I've listened to it, but it does right. get boring. Uh, stay Thank safe, you. and hopefully I can catch up with you soon when I'm out on stateside. If you're in New York, let's do it, up, man. Love to hook up. Yes, absolutely. All right. Stay safe, brother. Thank yes, you. Yes, so sir. Much. My man, take care, champ.